Namaste YouTube. This is a video about saying fuck in social media, which is maybe a little bit controversial. Maybe you don't wanna watch this video, but I'll give a little bit of my insights. This was one of my more popular videos on Facebook. And so I think people really resonate with this uh, subject. And it has a lot to do with, especially as a yogi in the yoga community, not being too uptight, like being a little bit more loose. I quickly realized how uh, uptight maybe I become hanging out with only yogis going across the country, yoga studios, yoga students, talking about yoga all the time. When I go to, and meet my friends in California and in Florida, and these are people that I knew before yoga or they're just not into yoga, we're into other things that are in common like business or uh, dating or linguistics or uh, things like this. And they, it's quickly apparent how more free they are in their communication because they're not too confined by uh, beliefs that, you know, are somewhat a residue of like Christianity or something. Like if you do wrong, then you'll pay for it later. And yeah, there is cause and effect in the universe. This is a cause and effect universe. And there is karma and there's both karma like in this lifetime and then karma that you carry into this lifetime and so on. And that is not going to be resolved by not saying the word fuck or not saying the word shit or using derogatory terms or this or that. It, a lot of it comes down to how you say it. And I was teaching a lesson yesterday and it was a partner yoga lesson and a semi-private with these three people. And one of them was a lady, a woman, and she uh, was giving earnest attempt to correct her language because she could hear that mine was very different when I was working with the partner and I was asking, make your requests, put your leg here, or giving feedback about how such and such felt. Uh, she, I could tell that she, one, noticed the distinction and then two, she was trying to change how she, she was becoming more aware of the words coming out of her mouth. And later, at the end of the lesson, I tell her, don't get too wrapped up in the, in the, in the vocabulary. A little bit maybe in the syntax, but it's a lot of how you say it. You know, if I say, uh, and in a second, I'll do that classic example of using the word bitch, but in, in the context of that lesson, it was uh, something about you're doing a good job. And which is not necessarily the best vocabulary to use when you're giving feedback to somebody because it's a judgment. You're doing a good job versus you're doing a bad job. So there are some people that are very sensitive to those words. I have this level of sensitivity to those words, but due to my training with Arash and Vince and uh, mostly Arash, I think on this particular subject, I listen more to the sound. How do they sound when they say it? It's, it seems like such a simple thing and everybody's always told your tonality and how you say it means much more than uh, the word you use. But it's that alone is not the lesson. You gotta listen to the sound of how they say it. So instead of saying, you know, I could say, you're doing a good job. Or I could say, oh, you're doing a good job. That one, I wouldn't be so critical. If my receiver said that to me, I wouldn't be like, don't pass judgment on me. I would clearly hear in their voice, this feels really good. And those are the words they were able to muster up. Uh, the first one was a little bit firm, a little hard. And it comes back to, the, so I'll use the example of the word bitch. I'll probably lose half of my subscribers for going into this topic. And that's fine. Most of my viewers are guys anyway. And a lot of guys feel paralyzed. I know this because I was one of them. They feel paralyzed because they can't use the language as they want to. It's okay for my girlfriend to call me an asshole, but if I call her a bitch, then all of a sudden I'm you know, a, a sinner and a, a devil. And that's the difference is something firm, like I don't even want to say it. I, very, like, I don't remember the last time I said bitch in a very like, I wanted to hurt the, try to hurt the person. It's ridiculous. There's no reason to. It's, First of all, there's worse things that you can say besides like a name calling because that just points to your weakness if you gotta call somebody a name. And secondly, if you have allowed the argument to escalate to the part where you just call each other names, then it's time to do something else. And so if I was like, bitch, that would be a, a mean way to say it. But if I say something like, bitch, <laughs> like, and some women might still get offended by that and that's okay. My girlfriend was offended for a very long time and it was, uh, a gradual change. And it was a change that I intended. And someone might say, why would you want to call your girlfriend a bitch? I don't want to be censored. I want my communication to be most free in the household. If I want to say bitch, I, I will say it. And, but most of the time it comes across as you're a sexy bitch. 
or when she uh, is being like flirty or playful with me, like not doing what I say, but in a playful way, like trying to get me to interact with her more, then I might say something that if you just, if you read it in print and you didn't hear the sound behind it and you didn't have a context, it would seem like, oh, he's being mean or he's calling her a name. So don't get caught up in the word. It's the sound, it's how you say it, you know? And that being said, yeah, obscenities, they are, um, a diluted English. They're diluted language. They are very general. They're not very specific and it's very context dependent. So I do my best to use a variety of vocabulary to really articulate and uh, be precise. And then every now and then I like to sprinkle in uh, some playfulness, cock balls, pussy, fuck. And that probably 10 more people just unsubscribed and that's fine because it's not about if you were liking me because I was avoiding some words, then you didn't really like me. You just liked uh, the narrow framework that I was able to express in that was up to your standards. And it's, it's also context dependent, obviously. Like I'm not gonna curse in front of my grandparents or older people, older clients, uh, or in, in younger people that maybe don't understand the, the context and the tonality and things that they will mirror me and then get in trouble with their superiors later. Like, you know, so be mindful of that. And every now and then we slip up. Uh, every now and then I say a curse word in front of somebody that I shouldn't, that I wouldn't if I were more aware. And every now and then I censor myself. When, and then later I think to myself, I wish I had been more free in my expression. And I'm here to tell you that I have a PhD, that I'm successful as a yogi, that I have a girlfriend and that, who loves me. And maybe she'll leave one day, but it's, you know, I can find other women that will also love me. And she knows this, which is one reason why she stays with me. And so my relationships with my family from most of the families that I know of and have visited are very strong and solid and very free and open. And it's not that I tell them everything about my life. I don't need them to know everything about my life. But for example, if I'm at home, this is the last thing I'll say. If I'm at home and I really want to swear, I'll say something like, let's say I'm at the dinner table and I'll say, blah, 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 please excuse this language, fuck, blah, 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 blah. Like that's as extreme as I'll go in that context. But on social media, this is about cursing on social media. Uh, you do what feels right to you. The people that leave, they weren't really your fans. They, were, they, they just liked that part of you that reminded them of that part of them they liked, which is always the case. But you want people that are, if you're the kind of person that never swears, that's cool too. There's gonna to be people that dislike you also. <laughs> so there's people that dislike straight edges. There's people that dislike, you know, rebellious people. Everybody, if you're firm on what you believe, somebody's gonna dislike you and they'll be vocal about it. I had a person click f l dislike on 53 of my videos in one day. I average one or two dislikes per week on my YouTube channel. And in one day I look and I had 53 dislikes and I was like, whoa. This is awesome. Like somebody took their time, which they never will get back. They're gonna die and they'll never get back that half an hour or that hour that it took them to go through 53 of my videos and click dislike over You gotta wait for the page to load. I was so flattered. And if you stand for something, somebody is gonna resist you. So if you wanna swear, swear. If you don't, don't. The downside is I think face, uh, YouTube will um, not let me run ads. <laughs> so like this video, after I reach a thousand subscribers, I'll try to put ads on it and they'll probably censor it and say you can't because you use the word fuck. Fuck, fuck, fuck. So if you're under 18, don't swear unless your mom and dad says so or you're out of the house and I don't take any responsibility for what you do in life. That's your choice. So other than that, I could go on and on. If you like this video, comment below, subscribe to the channel. I'll give you more of my opinion on this sort of thing. Uh, this goes deeper into social psychology, sheep mentality, wolf mentality, and uh, inner ethics a kind of inner fortitude and an alignment. And how do you find your ethics? This is the practice of yoga. Like when you do your breathing and you do your stretching and you do your sitting and quietly meditating and contemplating, you will start to see the pictures and sentences in your mind that are deeper in the, towards unconsciousness, towards autopilot, towards autonomic nervous system. And from there you've hijacked or not hijacked, you've hacked into You've hacked into the system of your mind and you can start to change things. That's the yoga practice is you slow things down so that you can really see clearly your beliefs and then you choose. Do you want them not, change them not, so on. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. Namaste.
Oh yeah, check out the silent flute too because I go way deeper into this sort of stuff there. But you know where that is at ninthlimb.com. Okay, peace. Oh.